Well, all right, everybody, here we go. Strap yourself in and prepare yourself for the ride. We are going to go over all of my settings today as best as I can remember everything that I've done and every tweak and so forth. If I forget something, or if you want to know something, put it in the comments below. I will respond. And if I can think of anything that I forgot, I will also pin it as a comment. And hopefully these will help you out. I'm going to keep my video running in the background. These flights that you're seeing, multiple aircraft in multiple locations, are with the settings that I am going to share with you. Now, not a lot of my settings have been changed from my previous videos, but a couple things have. And the driver I'm running is 545.84. That's the game ready driver that was released by NVIDIA on 17 October. 545.84. Now, here's my gaming and graphics. You can see I have game mode turned off. Again, most of these haven't really changed from my previous video, but I want to show them to you as the flight is going so you can see what I experience with these settings. For my default graphics, I have all three of these turned on. I have my variable refresh rate, I have my HAGs, and I have optimization for Windows games turned enabled or turned on. Now my system is a this is just showing that I have high performance for flight simulator which most people do and there is a registry video out there so that you don't have to put it in high performance manually but you can do it permanently rid of registry and I will have a link to any of the tutorials or videos that I followed will be in my description below and so there is definitely one that I had followed on making that a registry change so that I don't have to put it in high mode whenever I want to play the game or the sim. And again, you can see I, I get pretty good performance with it. Now these are my virtual desktop streamer settings. The codec is the H.264, everything else I believe is the default. Oh, and the audio streaming, I think I changed the VR and headset, but that really doesn't have any bearing on the performance. Now, within the VR environment, these are the settings. I'm on high for quality, 80 for my frame per second, free uh, frame rate. VR bitrate 120, sharpening 90. And then the others are the normal ones that are turned on. And again, you can see, I mean, I don't fly with um, photo real, the uh, photogrammetry. I don't like the way it looks on my, my computer. I fly with a laptop. This is a Alienware Ryzen 5900 series laptop all the specs are in the description below i don't fly with the oculus cable or earlink because they're not good on my computer if it were, flew good i probably would use it but i have great results and the photogrammetry i don't think it adds that much you know, on my computer so i fly without it and i'm happy with it because i can fly and the aircraft and if the buildings don't look 100 percent realistic not really a big deal for my flying um, i'd rather have the better performance and i go by the buildings too quick to really notice anyhow and once you get up higher they look pretty damn realistic so These are the settings that work well on my system with the specs below with the Quest 2 headset. And I'm not sure yet on the Quest 3. I was going to look at getting one recently, but I'm still waiting. So here's my NVIDIA control panel settings. I have the 16X on my anisotropic filtering here. It's turned off in the game, and I will show those settings. The low latency mode, everything else is default. The low latency mode 
I've not been able to tell the difference between on and ultra, so I just have it set to on, thinking that maybe it uses slightly less processing power. The rest of the settings, max performance, application control quality for my texture filtering, and then the rest of the faults, except for the pre-rendered frames, which I have set to two. And I'm landing because I've had a few comments on some of my videos asking why I show my takeoffs, my departures, but I never really show my landings. So I'm letting a couple of the landings roll on in the videos here as I go over some of my settings. So there are two video tutorials that are very critical that are gonna be linked below. Those two videos have to do with installing a deep loaded driver. Now I do still use the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. Video link will be in the description. Very worthwhile to run that, I think, in the background if you have a lot of things on your system, which I really don't, but I still find it useful. Uh, yeah, so the video links are that I'm gonna have down below will show how to download and create a deep loaded driver, how to uninstall a driver properly in safe mode, and then how to install that deep loaded driver. So different location now, new aircraft, fun aircraft, love this aircraft. <laughs> but again, I just wanted to show some performance flying under different conditions for you, all with the same settings. Some with clouds, some without, some with wind, some without. Not gonna bother doing rain or snow or anything, but hopefully you'll get the idea. And again, if I forget any of the settings that you think I should have included, or if there's anything else, comment. I'll be glad to put it down below. And if you have something that you think would make my settings better, please share it. I'll try it out, that's for sure. The whole goal is to make this as good as we can for everybody that loves to fly, right? And since I've been flying Microsoft Flight Sim now for close to 40 years, <laughs> I'd say I enjoy it. Um, so here's, like I said, the links, well, the screens to show you the two flight uh, videos to check out. I must be getting tired because I'm getting all tongue-tied. I had four really nice flights that I did for this video and yeah as you can see it is kind of a longer video believe me it's not as long as the four flights were combined uh, this would be quite a long video if that was the case because I flew all four flights I would say each of them was very close to half an hour to 40 minutes and the performance never dropped, it never started slagging off or anything, so um, just adjusting my heading here, I got the autopilot on here, and gonna turn on my guns, and, you know, just pretend no guns on the ship right now, but I like to go through what might be done, you know, if you were actually flying this. So, nice aircraft, I do enjoy this aircraft. So the settings are spread out over this video, so you gotta kinda watch a little bit. <laughs> so these are the Steam VR settings. These are the VR settings in the game, defaults. Really, I think, I, um, except for maybe some of the stuff I turned off that is on by default, but these are the general settings. Then there's the video settings here. Auto, on, on, auto, and then the per application which you can only see if you are in VR mode, and these are the defaults as well. Haven't really had much need to tweak them. All right, so here are my in-game settings. Now I'm showing the PC settings here because there are a couple of things in here that do affect the game, the VR settings. But mostly, I just wanted to show, I do fly under the DirectX 12 beta. 
performance drops way down for me if I go direct X11. So we're in NVIDIA DLSS, we're in auto mode, we have depth on, we have on and boost, and then we have custom for global rendering and the settings you can see here. Now, things like trees, buildings and so forth, I, I change those. If I'm flying in the city, I might turn the buildings up. If I'm out in the mountains, I crank the trees up. Um, I don't usually mess with the clouds. I usually leave them where they're at. But if I crank a lot of clouds up, I might turn it down because a lot of clouds really takes away. And like I said, I don't do photogrammetry. I will turn on live weather and multiplayer occasionally. But for the most part, I do not. And this is my user config file, which shows the post-process settings. Because usually if you followed any video out there for the changing your user config, it's going to be usually that section. And again, here's another landing for you. Coming in a little bit hot right now in this aircraft. So you can see the performance even rolling on the ground is quite smooth. There's no real stutters. I have a few views times here where I look to the side quite a bit and it's really nice okay we're in the use racer right now it's been uh, this is the latest version which is a couple months old but still the latest and we're at uh, Falmouth Air Park in Cape Cod Massachusetts 5b6 this is where I took my real in-life flying lessons not in this aircraft thank goodness <laughs> but uh, this one you gotta really be careful because there's trees at the end of this aircraft here, runway here and so I gotta really be careful now <laughs> um, and it was fun learning to fly here in real life because when you get above the trees the wind Cape Cod's always windy hits you immediately and then when you're landing you're always countering for that wind and then as soon as you drop below tree level the wind is gone and you if you gotta really be, pay attention it was a fun place to learn to fly, that's for sure. I got to fly around here, flew over to Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, uh, flew up, flew over, did a lot of my touch and goes at New Bedford, which was a lot of fun. But um, yeah, I mean, okay, so I don't have photogrammetry on right now. Do I miss it looking at what I'm looking? I used to live on that street. That looks like what I saw. You know, I flew this in real life, and that is a street that I actually lived on. And, uh, yeah, I don't miss photogrammetry. I really don't. Maybe you do like it. Maybe your computer can handle it. My RTX 3070 laptop doesn't. Not that well. It makes everything look blobby, and I don't like that. And I go by stuff too fast to really notice it. So, anyhow... Continue watching. There's a few more settings here and there. Again, any of the tutorials I followed, you'll find the links down below. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody that watches and everyone that comments. Really, I do. Thanks, and we'll see you in the skies. Oh, I just wanted to put on my frame rate here using the uh, <laughs> OpenXR toolkit. You can see here I'm getting 40. Now I'm getting an odd CPU binding 
which I usually don't get, but it doesn't seem to be really causing an issue now. Frame rate here is usually half of what Steam VR, um, not Steam VR, what virtual desktop is set at. So if you remember earlier, I showed you I had my virtual desktop set at 80 FPS. So here we see 40. If I was to change it to 60, this would go to 30. If I changed it to 90, this would go to 45. I really don't notice much difference between 80 and 90, but it does seem to be smoother at 80 and maintaining that 40. And you can see it maintains it. I am not dropping down to 39 or 38. It's staying at 40 with an occasional blip to 41. You just saw. So, if you can't read it, FPS 40, CPU bound, plus 24 millisecond, app CPU 24 millisecond. Well, there you go. I'm CPU bound because of the app right now, probably because I haven't set that high priority. Um, VRAM at 4 gig, 62%, and the rest is 0 milliseconds and 14. 15.5 milliseconds, 13, so. Hey, there you go. Frame rates and everything. <laughs> and uh, I think we're gonna do a, a very, oh, we got some traffic up here. I'm um, gonna do a, uh, I don't wanna quite say an emergency landing at Hyannis, but let's just say we're gonna pretend we gotta get down quickly and safely. All right. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the skies. Water looks pretty here today. All right, so here's the airport, Hyannis up ahead, Boardman Pullman is, I think, the name used to be when I lived up here. I did live in Hyannis a couple decades ago, lived there a long time. Um, K-H-Y-A is the designation of this airport. And I didn't even bother to check in to see if I'm landing the right way, but... Yeah, yeah it looks like it. So we did good. <laughs> Ooh, a little bouncy, but I don't want to nose over. All right, thanks for watching again.